Try to imagine a world without tools. No hammers, no fire, no smartphones. Just bare hands against the raw forces of nature. It's almost impossible. For millions of years, tools have been the secret weapon of our species, shaping not only our survival, but our very identity. But who struck the first spark? Who dared to chip stone into something more? And how did these early innovations set us on a path to conquer the planet? From the very first start, the rise of human tool use wasn't just chance, it was a statistical long shot. For millions of years, the odds of our ancestors ever developing tools hovered below 11%. Just a 30% chance we'd evolved the brain power to use them. Only a 50% chance that social learning, passing knowledge from one generation to the next, would take hold. The deck was stacked against us, and yet, necessity became our greatest teacher. As the environment grew harsher and more unpredictable, the pressure mounted, and with an 80% likelihood that tools would become essential for survival, something extraordinary happened. Against the odds, we didn't just adapt, we invented. In every sense of the word, the evolution of tool use in humans is deeply linked to the development of our cognitive abilities. This cognitive growth was a gradual process that began with our distant ancestors, the Australopiths. Dating back around 3 to 4 million years ago, these early hominins, such as Australopithecus afarensis, roamed the African landscapes. While their brains were small compared to modern humans, they were beginning to show signs of intelligence that would ultimately later lead to tool creation. For one, these early bipeds freed their hands for carrying objects, using simple sticks or stones to interact with their environment. Although not yet true toolmakers, the Australopiths laid the foundation for what was to come. The real breakthrough, however, came with the Homo habilis around 2.6 million years ago, and they changed everything. Known rather aptly as the handyman, Homo habilis had brains that were approximately 50% larger than their Australopith predecessors. As you would expect, this increased brain size allowed them to create and use the first rudimentary tools, which were stone flakes, known as old one tools. These simple yet revolutionary tools were used to butcher animals and crack open bones in order to unlock their nutrient-rich marrow. Moving on from the surface level though, tool use was not just an adaptation to survive, but a cognitive leap, a shift that encouraged problem solving and forward planning. Something we are far too familiar with today thanks to a lot of job interviews in a world that isn't slowing down technologically. For lack of a better term, the brains of Homo habilis were developing, specifically in areas that really mattered. Areas like the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is linked to abstract thinking and decision making. This part is responsible for many crucial functions like working memory, cognitive flexibility, and even planning. It plays key functions in considering multiple options, forming strategies, and solving complex problems. So, as you can already tell, it was the home of tool creation. The evolution of the prefrontal cortex, which was responsible for these higher level cognitive functions in Homo habilis, was fascinating. It created a feedback loop as more advanced tool use required more brain power, and this brain power, in turn, drove the creation of even better tools. Something we see in action today as we continue to improve on existing technology. In fact, as our technology increases, so does our IQ, so much so that the phenomenon even has a name. It's called the Flynn Effect. The average IQ has increased by about three points per decade in just the United States. Named after James Flynn, a political scientist from New Zealand who discovered the phenomenon. This means that the average person in 2012 had a higher IQ than 95% of the population in 1900. This feedback loop, however, was most evident in the species after the Homo habilis, Homo erectus. In a shocking twist, Homo erectus, a species that emerged about 1.8 million years ago, not only made more sophisticated tools such as hand axes, but also learned to control fire, which was a groundbreaking achievement. As if that wasn't shocking enough, these advancements spread across continents, further solidifying the relationship between intelligence and technology. But the cognitive leap didn't just change how humans shaped their environment, it also changed how they interacted with each other. That's because use of tools required more than just personal skill. It necessitated teaching, cooperation, and communication. As such, early humans needed to pass on toolmaking skills, organize group hunts, and share resources. This necessity for collaboration sparked the development of more complex social dynamics. Essentially, as tool use grew, so did the ability to communicate using gestures, shared tasks, and eventually early language. The spread of knowledge was no longer just about survival, it became a social glue, as groups that could work together to create tools, strategize, and hunt were far more successful. 
This not only strengthened group bonds, but laid the groundwork for the social structures that would later evolve into culture and society. But the question now is, just how much of society do we owe to the evolution of tools? As mentioned before, tool use advancement didn't just shape how early humans interacted with their environment. No, it fundamentally altered how they interacted with each other. The need to craft tools, hunt in groups, and share resources led to the evolution of more complex social dynamics. This is mainly because early humans had to teach one another how to shape stones, organize group hunts, and divide the spoils. This necessity for cooperation and shared knowledge sparked the rise of communication, likely through gestures and early forms of language. No longer was survival just an individual effort, it became a group endeavor. As social learning became essential, it led to stronger group cohesion, and soon enough, early human communities began to form stronger bonds through shared goals, such as crafting tools or planning hunts. Groups that could effectively communicate and work together had a survival advantage, which likely accelerated the evolution of social behaviors like empathy, teaching, and cooperation. This was the beginning of culture, as passing down knowledge from one generation to the next became just as important as finding food. But besides this, something else pushed us to use tools, as the environment played a critical role in shaping these social dynamics. Changing landscapes and shifting climates, from lush forests to vast savannas, forced early humans to adapt their tools and strategies for survival. But the question now is, how and why? As you might already know, early humans were highly dependent on their environments for survival, and as the Earth's climate changed, so did their strategies. For instance, when dense forests began to shrink and vast savannas expanded, early hominins faced new challenges. In these open landscapes, the need for long-distance movements, larger prey, and new sources of food became pressing, and as such, tools evolved to meet these demands. In forested environments, early humans likely relied on sticks or unshaped stones to gather food and defend themselves, but as they moved into open savannas, the requirements shifted. The ability to hunt larger, faster animals required more effective weapons. And this is when stone tools evolved from simple flakes to more advanced designs like hand axes, which could be used for hunting, skinning, and butchering large prey. Homo erectus, for example, created hand axes with sharper edges that were ideal for these new tasks, reflecting the cognitive leap driven by necessity we spoke about. But that wasn't all, because climatic shifts also forced humans to adapt to new food sources. As plant life became scarcer in certain areas, humans began to rely more on hunting and scavenging. As you would expect, tools for processing meat, like scrapers and cleavers, became essential. To add to it, environmental pressures pushed humans to harness fire, a transformative tool for cooking food, providing warmth and warding off predators. So whether it was developing weapons for hunting on open plains or crafting tools to process tougher food sources, this process of adaptation not only shaped our tools, but also influenced our social dynamics and ultimately, the course of human evolution. Now that we know why, let's talk about the tools, because they were quite ingenious. From the simplest stone flakes to sophisticated weapons and farming implements, tools evolved in parallel with the challenges and opportunities early humans faced, and as such, had different time periods. The older one tool industry was the first earliest known tool tradition, dating back around 2.6 million years to the Lower Paleolithic period. These tools were made by early hominins such as Homo habilis and consisted of simple stone flakes and cores. The telltale signs of older one tools was their basic design, which was simply rocks chipped at the edges to create sharp surfaces. These flakes were used primarily for cutting and scraping meat off of bones or processing plant materials, while the cores might have been used as hammer stones to break bones for marrow. Though simple, these tools were revolutionary in providing early humans with access to a broader range of food. But they were just the beginning. Ranging from 1.7 million to 200,000 years ago, the Acheulean tool tradition developed by Homo erectus and later by early Homo sapiens was a significant advancement in tool use. The signature tool of this period was the hand axe. Unlike older one tools though, Acheulean axes were carefully crafted with symmetrical bifacial edges. These tools were more versatile and could be used for a wide range of tasks, including chopping wood, digging, butchering animals, and even as weapons. Today, the Arshulian period is known for its more refined craftsmanship, caused by growing cognitive abilities such as planning and foresight. And while they were efficient at the time, the tools to follow would quickly change the game. From about 300,000 to 40,000 years ago, these tools were associated with both Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens. They emerged during the Middle Paleolithic period and were more specialized than their predecessors. That's because instead of relying solely on large, heavy tools like hand axes, 
humans began crafting smaller, more precise implements such as scrapers, points and awls. These were used for a variety of tasks, from preparing hides to making clothing, to more efficiently hunting animals. The Mousterian tools also gave us a clear look at a leap in social learning, as these techniques had to be passed down and shared within groups. While this tool showed specificity, the next tool to follow was more or less a technological boom for ancient hominids. Spanning 50,000 to 10,000 years ago, the Upper Paleolithic period witnessed an explosion of technological and cultural innovation. For example, Homo sapiens developed a diverse array of blades, bruins, bone tools, and projectile points. These tools were more delicate and refined, often made using a method called blade technology, where long, thin flakes were struck off stone cores. The Upper Paleolithic tools included spear points, needles, and harpoonsons. More than sophistication, these tools reflected the growing advances in hunting, fishing, and even artistic pursuits. This period also saw the use of materials like bone, antler, and ivory for tools, and the development of more effective hunting weapons like the atlatl, which is essentially a spear thrower and the bow and arrow. This tool period would last until the end of the Ice Age, when everything changed again. Running the show around 10,000 to 6,000 years ago, these tools were a fascinating period in our evolution. That's because as the Ice Age ended and human societies became more settled, the Mesolithic, aka Middle Stone Age, saw the development of microliths, which are small, sharp stone blades that could be set into wooden shafts to create composite tools. These lightweight tools were ideal for the changing environment, where humans relied on smaller game and more diverse food sources, including fishing. The adaptability of microliths was game-changing, as it allowed them to be used in various configurations, such as arrowheads or even barbs for fishing spears. This period was also paired with the beginning of agriculture, and as such, the tool also had to adapt. Ranging from 10,000 to 4,500 years ago, the Neolithic, or New Stone Age, was marked by the Agricultural Revolution. This was when humans transitioned from hunting and gathering to farming and settled communities. Of course, this shift required new types of tools, particularly for farming and building. And soon enough, sickles for harvesting crops, grinding stones for processing grain, and adzes for woodworking became common. But that was not all, because humans began making pottery and polished stone tools, which were more durable and efficient than their predecessors. The Neolithic period also saw the domestication of animals, which further influenced tool use for ploughing fields and other agricultural activities. It was here we began to get our stride, and what would follow changed the world permanently. Perhaps the most famous age on this list, the Bronze Age, spanned from about 4,500 to 1,200 BCE. It marked the end of the Stone Age as humans learned to smelt metals, and as you know, metals rewrote history. With the discovery of bronze, an alloy of copper and tin, humans began making bronze tools and weapons. These were much stronger and sharper than stone tools, and soon enough, bronze axes, swords, chisels and hammers became the standard, revolutionising agriculture, warfare and construction. Metal tools allowed for more precise work and lasted longer than their stone counterparts, pushing human technology into a new era. But among all this, something that truly changed us was specialization, and it made all the difference. At Emory University, a groundbreaking study led by anthropologist Justin Pargeter revealed that the miniaturization of tools was pivotal in the evolution of hominins. In fact, it was so important that it set them apart from other primates. See, in truth, not only humans use tools. In fact, today animals like chimpanzees, dolphins, crows, and octopuses use tools for foraging, protection, and problem solving. But while many species relied on larger, cumbersome tools, hominins adopted smaller and more versatile stone flakes that provided a significant advantage in daily life and survival. These diminutive tools, some less than an inch in length, were essential for a variety of tasks, including cutting, piercing, and hunting. The study showed that the development of these tiny tools marked a significant evolutionary leap. Essentially, early humans needed to adapt to rapidly changing environments, especially during periods of climate change approximately 17,000 years ago. As the landscape transformed, these miniature tools enabled early humans to exploit new resources and successfully navigate unfamiliar terrains. That's because the flexibility and efficiency of smaller tools not only improved their hunting strategies, but also allowed them to gather various food sources, leading to enhanced nutritional intake. Pargeter's research showed that tool miniaturization was not merely a side effect of human evolution, but a crucial factor that allowed hominins to thrive and disperse across the globe. This shift in toolmaking reflected a broader cognitive and cultural evolution, showing the ingenuity of our ancestors. 
The study ultimately emphasized that understanding the importance of tool size could provide deeper insights into the survival strategies of early humans and their adaptation to changing ecological conditions. But what does this history mean for us today and humans of the future? Today, the legacy of tool evolution continues to shape human existence. From digital technology to biotechnology, our tools have become increasingly sophisticated, enabling advancements in communication, medicine, and exploration. As we face challenges like climate change and resource scarcity, the need for innovative solutions is more critical than ever. The future holds immense potential, with tools like artificial intelligence and nanotechnology poised to revolutionize industries and enhance human capabilities. As we build on the foundations laid by our ancestors, the journey of tool evolution reminds us that human ingenuity knows no bounds, driving progress for generations to come.